This video is about radian angle measure. This is AP Precalculus Topic 3.2. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number 1. The figure shows a circle centered at the origin with an angle of measure theta in standard position. The terminal ray of the angle intersects the circle at point P. The measure of angle theta is pi over 3. Find the measures of the angles in standard position whose terminal ray intersects the circle at points Q, R, and S. Ignoring the y-axis, the circle has been divided up into six equal sectors. So these lines where the P and the Q and the x-axis are, these lines are multiples of pi over 3. So at P this is 1 pi over 3, and then at Q this is 2 pi over 3. Right here on the x-axis this is 3 pi over 3 which reduces down to just pi. But then moving forward at r we are at 4 pi over 3. The angle whose terminal side passes through s has a radian measure of 5 pi over 3. And then if we complete the circle we are all the way around to 6 pi over 3, which reduces to 2 pi. So these are the answers to number 1. Number 2. The figure shows a circle centered at the origin with an angle of measure theta in standard position. The terminal ray of the angle intersects the circle at point P. The measure of angle theta is pi over 6. Find the measures of the angles in standard position whose terminal ray intersects the circle at points Q, R, and S. The angles at Q, R, and S are multiples of this pi over 6. On problem number 1, we saw that an angle whose terminal ray is the negative x-axis had a radian measure of pi, and an angle whose terminal ray goes all the way around and back to the positive x-axis, like this, had a radian measure of 2 pi. Since we are looking for these multiples of pi over 6, the key is to think of pi as 6 pi over 6, and to think of 2 pi as 12 pi over 6. Therefore, the angle who ends at q is one multiple before 6 pi over 6. Therefore, it is at 5 pi over 6. The angle at r is 1 multiple after 6 pi over 6. So r is at 7 pi over 6. And the angle that ends at s is 1 multiple before 12 pi over 6. It's at 11 pi over 6. These are the answers to number 2. Number 3. The figure shows a circle centered at the origin with an angle of measure theta in standard position. The terminal ray of the angle intersects the circle at point P. The measure of angle theta is pi over 4. Find the measures of the angles in standard position whose terminal ray intersects the circle at points Q, R, and S. Since point P is at pi over 4 radians, points Q, R, and S are at multiples of pi over 4. At this point we have memorized that halfway around is pi radians and all the way around is 2 pi radians. But since we are looking for multiples of pi over 4, the key is to think of pi as 4 pi over 4 and to think of 2 pi as 8 pi over 4. The angle at Q is 1 multiple before 4 pi over 4, thus 3 pi over 4. The angle at r is 1 multiple after 4 pi over 4, so that's 5 pi over 4. And the angle at s is 1 multiple before 8 pi over 4, that is 7 pi over 4. These are the answers to number 3. Number 4. Let theta be an angle in standard position whose terminal ray intersects a circle centered at the origin at point p. If point P is in quadrant 2, which of the following could be theta? 
the question is which one of these is in the second quadrant? Pi over 4 is in the first quadrant, so A is out. Pi over 6 is in the first quadrant, but 5 pi over 6 is a multiple of that. We know that pi is right here, halfway around the circle. Since 5 pi over 6 is a multiple of pi over 6, let's think of pi as 6 pi over 6. Therefore, 5 pi over 6 will be one multiple before this, which does put it into the second quadrant. So the answer is B. Number 5. Let theta be an angle in standard position whose terminal ray intersects the circle centered at the origin at point P. If point P is in quadrant 3, which of the following could be theta? So the question is, which one of these falls in the third quadrant? Pi over 3 is in the first quadrant, so A is out. Pi over 2 is right here at the top of the circle. So 3 pi over 2 is a multiple of that. So this is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 would be right here at pi, and 3 pi over 2 would be down here at the bottom. This is on the negative y-axis, which is not in any quadrant. So b is out. Pi over 4 is in the first quadrant. 5 pi over 4 is a multiple of pi over 4. Let's figure out where that is. Let's use the fact that pi is the same thing as 4 pi over 4. Therefore, 5 pi over 4 will be one multiple past this, putting it in the third quadrant. So the answer is C. Number 6. Let theta be an angle in standard position whose terminal ray intersects a circle centered at the origin at point P. If point P is in quadrant 4, which of the following could be theta? So the question is, which one of these falls in quadrant 4? Pi over 6 is in the first quadrant, so A is out. Pi over 2 is half of pi, so that lands right here at the very top. That's in no quadrant, so B is definitely out. 5 pi over 6. Well, pi over 6 is in the first quadrant, but 5 pi over 6 is a multiple of pi over 6. Let's use the fact that pi is the same thing as 6 pi over 6 to locate this. Since 6 pi over 6 is right here at halfway around, 5 pi over 6 will be one multiple before this, which puts it in the second quadrant. Therefore, C is out. So the answer must be D, but let us follow through. We have memorized that halfway around the circle is pi radians, and all the way around the circle is 2 pi radians. But 5 pi over 3 is a multiple of pi over 3. So let's think of pi as 3 pi over 3 radians, and let's think of 2 pi as 6 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 will be one multiple before 6 pi over 3, which does put it in the fourth quadrant. That's why the answer is D. Number 7. Let theta be an angle in standard position whose terminal ray intersects a circle centered at the origin at point P. If point P is in quadrant 1, which of the following could be theta? Pi over 6 is in the first quadrant. However, a negative angle indicates a clockwise rotation. So negative pi over 6 is in the fourth quadrant. So A is out. To place angle B, let's think of pi as 6 pi over 6, and let's think of 2 pi as 12 pi over 6. Therefore, 11 pi over 6 will be one multiple before 12 pi over 6, placing it in the fourth quadrant. So B is out. Angle C is negative, so we need to imagine a clockwise rotation. Halfway around clockwise would be negative pi. Let's think of it as negative 3 pi over 3. All the way around clockwise 
would be negative 2 pi. Let's think of that as negative 6 pi over 3. Negative 5 pi over 3 rotates clockwise past negative 3 pi over 3 and almost makes it all the way back around to negative 6 pi over 3. But negative 5 pi over 3 is one multiple short of negative 6 pi over 3, which does place it in the first quadrant. So the answer is C. Number 8. Let theta be an angle in standard position whose terminal ray intersects a circle centered at the origin at point P. If point P is in quadrant 2, which of the following could be theta? We have memorized that halfway around is pi radians. That's right on the negative x-axis, which is neither in quadrant 2 nor in quadrant 3. So answer A is out. Thinking of pi as 3 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 is one multiple before this, which does fall in quadrant 2. So the answer is B. Number 9. Which of these angles falls in quadrant 3? If we think of pi as 3 pi over 3, then we realize that 4 pi over 3 is one multiple after this which does fall in quadrant 3. So the answer is A. Number 10. Which of these angles falls in quadrant 4? If we think of pi as 6 pi over 6, we realize that 7 pi over 6 is one multiple after this, which puts it in quadrant 3. So A is out. If we think of pi as 4 pi over 4 and 2 pi as 8 pi over 4, we realize that 7 pi over 4 is one multiple before 8 pi over 4, which does put it right in the fourth quadrant. So the answer is B. Number 11. Which of these angles falls in quadrant 1? If we think of pi as 6 pi over 6, and 2 pi as 12 pi over 6, we realize that 13 pi over 6 is all the way around and then one multiple past 12 pi over 6. So 13 pi over 6 does land right here in the first quadrant. So the answer is A. You can also solve this problem by subtracting 2 pi. 13 pi over 6 is bigger than 2 pi. Subtracting 2 pi, so subtracting 12 pi over 6, will give you an angle that lands in the same place. It's called a coterminal angle. So 13 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6 is 1 pi over 6, or simply pi over 6. So 13 pi over 6 will land in the exact same position as just pi over 6 which is in the first quadrant. Let's practice that. Let's subtract 2 pi from 13 pi over 4 to see where this one would land. 2 pi is the same as 8 pi over 4. If you subtract 8 pi over 4 from 13 pi over 4, you get 5 pi over 4. Right here at pi, we could think of as 4 pi over 4. So 5 pi over 4 would, hand, would land right here in the third quadrant. Therefore, 13 pi over 4 will also land right here in quadrant 3. That was just good practice. For problems 12 through 20, sketch the following angles in standard position on the axes below. Pi over 3 would be right about here. Halfway around would be pi, and we could think of this as 3 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 will be one multiple before that. So uh, let's just put the rotation in to show that this is a counterclockwise rotation. And that's number 12 for you. Pi is right here, halfway around. Pi over 6 is 1 sixth of this. 
So that's going to land right about here. Don't forget to draw the rotation. Pi is right here. But for this problem, we will think of it as 4 pi over 4. In that case, 5 pi over 4 will be one multiple past this. So that's your sketch for number 14. Pi is right here. Pi over 2 is half that, right here. Pi over 2 is so common, definitely go ahead and memorize that pi over 2 is right here, what you used to think of as 90 degrees. Number 16, pi is right here. But for this problem, let's think of this as 6 pi over 6. Therefore, 7 pi over 6 will be one multiple past that. By the way, let me show you how I decide how far past 6 pi over 6 to go. I know that pi, and thus 6 pi over 6, is halfway around. It's a semicircle. To picture how big 1 pi over 6 is, I take the semicircle and I divide it up into 6 equal parts. So each multiple is about this big. So that's how I knew to go about this far past 6 pi over 6 for the 7 pi over 6. Similarly, if I want to visualize how big pi over 3 is, I divide the semicircle into 3 equal parts. For this problem, I'm thinking of pi as 3 pi over 3 and 2 pi as 6 pi over 3. Therefore, 5 pi over 3 will be one multiple before 6 pi over 3. So it will land right here. So that's how I know how big to make this sector. It's about one third of the semicircle. We know that pi is right here. So just draw the rotation. For number 19, I'm going to think of pi as 4 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 will be one multiple before this. Notice how I made this gap one-fourth of the semicircle. For number 20, we will think of pi as 6 pi over 6 and 2 pi as 12 pi over 6. Therefore, 11 pi over 6 will be one multiple before 12 pi over 6. So it's going to fall right here. And I'm making this a very small piece because this should be one-sixth of the semicircle. Don't forget to draw the rotation. For problems 21 through 36, determine which of the given answers could be the measure of angle theta in the figure. In number 21, this sector looks to be about one-third of the semicircle. You can see it a little better if I draw another one in like this. So p is at a multiple of pi over 3. This is 1 pi over 3, and this is 2 pi over 3. So the answer is C. Number 22. Right through the middle of quadrant 1 would be pi over 4. So this is smaller than 1 fourth of pi. So this is going to be 1 sixth of pi. So the answer is A. Also, you can visualize that you could divide the semicircle up into six equal pieces that equal theta. So theta is one-sixth of pi, pi over six. We know that pi is a semicircle. So this angle is half of a semicircle. So this is pi over two. So the answer is B. On number 24, this skinny little piece over here seems to be about one-sixth of the semicircle. So this little reference angle is a size of pi over 6. That means angle theta is some multiple of pi over 6. If we think of pi as 6 pi over 6, we realize that p is one multiple before 6 pi over 6. So this will be at 5 pi over 6. And the answer is C. 
In number 25, it appears that this small angle right here is one-sixth of a semicircle. So this has a size of pi over 6. That means angle theta, which goes all the way around and back like this, is some multiple of pi over 6. If we think of pi as 6 pi over 6, and if we think of 2 pi as 12 pi over 6, then we realize that p is at one multiple before 12 pi over 6. It's at 11 pi over 6. And the answer is d. When the terminal ray falls right in the middle of the quadrant, you know it's a multiple of pi over 4. And since in this case we're in the first quadrant, the answer is simply pi over 4. By the way, the angle between the terminal ray and the nearest side of the x-axis is called the reference angle. So this blue angle right here is the reference angle. Because the terminal ray falls right in the middle of the quadrant, I know this reference angle is pi over 4. That means that theta is some multiple of pi over 4. If we think of pi as 4 pi over 4, we know that p is 1 multiple before 4 pi over 4. So it must be 3 pi over 4. So the answer is b. On number 28, the terminal ray again falls right in the middle of a quadrant. So I know that the reference angle is pi over 4. That means this angle theta is some multiple of pi over 4. If we think of pi as 4 pi over 4 and 2 pi as 8 pi over 4, we realize that the terminal ray is one multiple before 8 pi over 4. So it must be 7 pi over 4. And the answer is D. On number 29, the terminal ray is not right in the middle. The reference angle is bigger than pi over 4. It must be pi over 3. That means that theta is some multiple of pi over 3. If we think of pi as 3 pi over 3, we realize that theta is one multiple before 3 pi over 3. So it must be 2 pi over 3. And the answer is C. On number 30, the reference angle again appears to be pi over 3. It looks like one third of the semicircle. Therefore, angle theta which goes all the way around, must be some multiple of pi over 3. If we think of pi as 3 pi over 3, we realize that theta is one multiple beyond 3 pi over 3. So it must be 4 pi over 3. And the answer is D. On number 31, the terminal ray falls right in the middle of the quadrant. So we know that the reference angle is pi over 4. So we know that theta is some multiple of pi over 4, so let's think of pi as 4 pi over 4. Then we can see that theta is one multiple past 4 pi over 4, so it must be 5 pi over 4. And the answer is C. For number 32, the terminal ray is not right in the middle. The reference angle is bigger than pi over 4 it must be pi over 3. And this is right in the first quadrant, so the answer is simply pi over 3. In number 33, the terminal ray falls right on the negative y-axis. There is no reference angle in this case, but we know that theta must be a multiple of pi over 2. And we can just sort of count. This is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So the answer is D. Number 34, look at that skinny little reference angle. It is clearly less than half of the quadrant. It must be a reference angle of pi over 6. 
That means theta must be a multiple of pi over 6. Well, let's think of pi as 6 pi over 6. So then we know theta is one multiple past 6 pi over 6. It must be 7 pi over 6. And the answer is B. For number 35, the terminal ray is not right in the middle of the quadrant. The reference angle is bigger than pi over 4. It must be pi over 3. That means theta is a multiple of pi over 3. So let's think of pi as 3 pi over 3. And let's think of 2 pi as 6 pi over 3. That means theta is one multiple less than 6 pi over 3. So it must be 5 pi over 3. And the answer is B. Number 36, easy peasy. We know that a semicircle is pi. So the answer is B. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist. Or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.